Despite playing 5 on 8 against the refs, which we'll get to, without 4 rotation pieces, the orange and blue dug down to overcome a 15 point deficit and pull off a definitively miraculous victory against an expecting to contend pacer squad that got utterly neutralized when it mattered most in the clutch. Fueling the Big Apple to its ninth straight W, how the late game substitutions from Tibbs saved the day, Brunson persevering through a rough whistle, and my take on the roster's most intimidating factor are all on their way plus a lot more. Keep it here. Right quick, just 9.2% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you aren't in that percentage, please subscribe. Splash thumbs up and follow your boy on Instagram and X at Hoops. Back to the vid. With Indiana up three in the late fourth queue, Jalen Brunson refused to be denied, willing New York over the top with miraculously innovative yet elusive under pressure shot creation. Josh Hart, Brunson open, three pointer, bang! Tie game with 644 remaining. Brunson runs into McBride, seven on the 24. Brunson backs in, scoop layup, it's up, it's good! Brunson drives, pulls up, jump shot, got it! Jalen Brunson, born to play basketball! Shot clock at 10, Brunson drives, foul, shot is up, count it, and one! Jalen Brunson with another answer! To the legendary Mike Green's point, Jalen Brunson's a naturally gifted pure hooper who was born to play the sport, and directly after signing in Liberty City, the Villanova product got to work on reversing the fortunes of this New York franchise right off the bat. His ability to lead the Knicks back to relevancy as the bona fide number one scoring option is a product of Brunson's at its core genuine commitment and bludgeoning work ethic. Last April, amidst a first round series against Cleveland they'd ultimately win, Tibbs detailed that dedication from Brunson, stating, quote, There's a lot of fake stuff in our league. Let's be honest. People say all the right things and do none of them. Jalen's just the opposite. Immediately, soon as he was signed, he came into the gym and started working out. Middle of the summer, by the end of the week, we got five people there. The end of the second week, we got ten people there. End quote. My having gone viral clip of a young Jalen being trained by his dad, former player, longtime friend of Tibbs, and now current Knicks assistant coach Rick Brunson lets us in on a mere smidgen of what it took for Jalen to develop the type of fundamental skill that he's currently equipped with. Good. Jog back. Go. Go get the ball. I'm going to throw it to the fence if you don't jog back. Here we go. Go. Good. Follow through though. Go back. Jog back. Up through the legs. Okay. Good. Go back. Jog back. Go. Keep your head up. You might have to take another dribble. Go. Good. Left to right. It's hard enough. Better, better. Hold the power through though. Amidst a hold your breath battle that was far too physical towards them specifically, the coaching from Tibbs being on point next to an assistant Tom also had next to him as the Bulls head coach in the Derrick Rose era being Jalen's dad, Rick, would beautifully assist the team's 1A in propelling the Knicks to a comeback. The missed calls are on their way, but let's stay on coaching for a quick minute as the final stages five-man unit of Miles Deuce McBride, Jalen 1A Brunson, to go along with Josh Hart, Precious Achua, and Isaiah Hartenstein, led into DiVincenzo replacing Deuce with exactly three minutes left in the clutch. The substitutions and, as always, aura from an all-time man in charge in Tibbs were on point. Thibodeau's legendarily old-school got-that-dog-in-him-win-at-all-cost mindset, combined with the recent success he's having, makes him a coach of the year contender without a doubt, so he rightfully just took home Eastern Conference Coach of the Month. This win heavily showcased the toughness, stability, and for opponents, danger of the Brunson burner, who was getting racked in the grill and illegally bodied all game to no avail in terms of drawing a whistle from the three men in stripes. The type of contact being let go by Pat Freyer, Jason Goldenberg, and Michael Smith, there's no excuse for in what was quite frankly an officiating abomination. However, this would only set the stage for a killer like Brunson. Despite his face swelling up like a fighter after a 12-round bout, 
In a circumstance where you'd see 95-100% to of players fold to the physicality and lack of whistle, Brunson's inspirational heart of a champion let nothing stop him as he dug down to, like his head coach, bring out that dog within him to somehow persevere. A driving factor to yet another New York W was the trade robbery who New York received as a part of the OG deal, formerly of my hometown raps in Precious Achua, who played incredible defense on newest Indiana Pacer Pascal Siakam helping hold his former Raptor teammate to just 8 for 19 shooting from the field and forcing my guy Spicy into 5 turnovers. Achua's clamps on a two-time All-NBAer included in a three-point game being unfazed by this Jalen Smith DHO before using his lead foot as leverage to spring back into position and swat Siakam at the basket. Credit to the Knicks gang rebounding for securing the board, and Achua would just a few seconds later tap in a putback to put the Knicks up five, as the Nigerian is a beast. Not only precious, but just as influential, German-American Isaiah Hartenstein, both putting on a beastly offensive rebounding clinic, was massive. Those two, along with product of Texas Jericho Sims, who led the Knicks matchup with Indiana in blocks with three swatted shots, is the basis behind New York being able to survive with injuries to multiple front court and wing players. Jericho is in the midst of earning more respect, but in this New York upload, we can't gloss over how Achua and Hartenstein insanely each had eight off offensive rebounds. The most combined rebounds on the offensive glass by a pair of teammates for the 23-24 season as a whole, as it continues to blow my mind how these two have seamlessly stepped up into the starting five. While the West Virginia product in Deuce ultimately didn't close the game on the court given he was replaced by the big ragu Dante DiVincenzo midway through the clutch, the Miles McBride minutes were game-changing as this man was a game-high plus 10, snatched two steals, drained three deep-range bombs, two triples of which were in the fourth quarter, ultimately chipping in what was a make-or-break 16 points off the pine. The three-year $13 million extension McBride signed in late December is a very nice bargain for Leon Rose and the Knicks front office. We mentioned the Chua's defense on Pascal, but coming off becoming the 10th player in NBA history to record a 10-point, 10-rebound, 10 10-assist 10 triple-double, glue guy, offensive connector, and lockdown defender Josh Hart had moments of also clamping up on who's a much bigger than him, Siakam. Persevering despite all these injuries is quite frankly the bottom line here with the Knicks as minus all of Ogugwa Ananobi, Julius Randle, Mitchell Robinson, and Quentin Grimes, the New York Knicks made a statement against the New Look Pacers and they'll look to move into second place in the East in what should be a showdown with the Los Angeles Lakers on Saturday night. Whether it was I Heart and Precious in the first five, or Deuce and Jericho off the pine, all of these critical bench pieces have resembled starting caliber weapons, showing you how next to Brunson, the depth of this Knicks squad is in my opinion the team's most intimidating factor. Facing every bit of adversity you could think of, seemingly corrupt officiating, getting down by double digits early, a contending caliber pacer squad at full strength while still being without your entire front court and for the first game being without key two-way weapon off the bench Quentin Grimes. It was a win for the Knicks that no matter which team you cheer for, you can't help but give the utmost respect to. Because Nick fans are in the midst of a special run of basketball, the best in nearly three decades to be exact since the Patrick Ewing era, along with a franchise monument I mentioned last video spanning back to 1997, January was also the first month since 1994 where New York owned the NBA's best record. Looking to finish what Big Pat started in the 90s, the winners in 15 of 17 phenoms from Midtown Manhattan are a serious threat to get through the East, given how easily their roster showing it can transition to a next man up approach. The injuries have allowed slash forced Thibodeau to utilize unpredictable, therefore funky lineups, and the role players filling them out have more than been able to carry their weight. They've been game changing. Speaking of game changing, give credit to the MSG crowd, whose unrelenting MVP chants were damn timely, as Brunson capped off a 40 point masterclass against Halliburton, Siakam, and a dangerous looking Pacer squad, all without four key rotation pieces, plus with the officiating being shamefully biased. So that win shows you the toughness of the 2024 Knicks, 1 through 15, in my opinion. That toughness showed up with Dante refusing to back down after Halliburton tried yelling in his grill early in the game, as he did pick up a tech for shoving him, but DiVincenzo and the Knicks would ultimately make Tyrese pay for that trash talk. But what did this shorthanded New York shocker over the Pacers display the most, in your opinion? Best answer gets next bid shout out with the top five commenters by June 21st, earning free merch of their choosing. Shout out to Gold Pan who says, scariest part about the Knicks is they're not done adding pieces. 
appreciate that answer and every other Deflow signing off.